Exactly. So you have that. You run. You're probably running Russ thirty to thirty five minutes, but Russ can. He is a guy that can do that. And then you have AAD probably playing around thirty minutes. You know, so you have like Russ at like thirty thirty five, AD at thirty. You know, twenty five. You know, thirty thirty five range, and then you have LeBron at twenty five. That would be ideal. Will they be able to make that work? Who knows? But that would at least be ideal. How do you feel about AD going into the season? I think, I think we go as far as he takes us. I think, uh, I mean, LeBron's LeBron. Don't get me wrong. LeBron is incredible. But to to ask him to handle basically carrying this team like he once could is mm. just it's an impossible task. Um, yeah. Now, if like if we got like say we get to the finals this year, which you know is a, is a, is a Tall ask right now, but let's yeah. assume, let's say we hindsight's 2020, we look into it and we see that we got to the finals. Now, I could see LeBron carrying this team if we were to make it to the finals. Because I do think LeBron's still good enough to where like I could kill myself to get one more ring. You know, especially well, he if has he that, has that if he has that yeah. opportunity. He has you that know? gene. If he knows he sees it, like if he sees it in front of him, like he he's gonna hard to stop him. Yeah. So, so that that, that no, no, no. I was just going to say, so even with where we are now, the, th- the big three, you have to divide it up. Like, the, the sheer responsibility, it can't just be LeBron and AD. It can't just be LeBron and Russ. Like, it has to be all three, is what you're saying. Like, right now, I mean, that's the only way community. to make it. Yeah, it has oh, to be a community. Because, look, LeBron and AD by themselves are going to get you 50 points plus a night. So you're already halfway to 100. You know, if Russ can come in and give you 15 then, then there you go. All you need is another, like, you know, 40, 50 points between the other 12 guys you have on your roster. Like, that's a good spot to be in. I mean, Russ averaged 18, 7, and 7 last season, as terrible as he was last season, still yeah. averaged 18, 7, and 7, still shot his around his league average, which was like 43%. Yeah. So, I mean, on paper, like, if you didn't watch the games on paper, you thought Russell West was a superstar last year. You were like, yeah. he's the third option. He averaged, he put up 18, seven and seven. The dude like killed it. Like, why is everyone hating on the guy? But if you actually watch the games, you saw how ineffective he was. And that's yeah. my big thing is Darvin Ham needs to figure out how to make him effective. You know, and like a big thing too is that like they had the uh the Lakers were running uh the pick and roll with LeBron and Westbrook and Westbrook and AD. And they were like they it had like an eighty percent score. Like they play, they did the play like nine times and scored yeah. eight out of nine times, and then just didn't do it again for like four months. Like why? Why would you just stop doing that? Like so, there's there's keys to success. Even like I brought up Houston earlier. Like the yeah. way that they were able to make Houston work because Houston wasn't working in the beginning either. They were getting killed. And yeah. the way they were able to make it work was Russ started becoming a slasher and a cutter, and Harden was able to get him on the block. Like, that's what they need to do. And Darvin Ham has basically said as much. He said, I'm going to have – because he's playing the four-out one in offense. So, basically, yeah. you're going to be able to put – you're going to be able to put Westbrook in either in the dunker spot as the one in where you can just drop it down to him and let him get some post touches. Uh, he's just so quick, agile, and just athletic. Anybody that's guarding him on an island down there, good luck, you know. And then spreads the floor, and he can kick it out if you need to. And then yeah. because it's spread, you're going to be able to have uh, Russ coming down with the head of steam to get to the basket. Like you can find ways to have him be effective, wh- whether it's AD or LeBron that's got it, uh, you know, at the at the high key. Like now you can have Russ cut cut to the basket, boom, easy bucket, easy layup. There's ways to integrate him into this offense to make him effective. You know, so if we could figure that out, I think we'd be really good. I really do. But yeah, real hoping, quick, let's hope, hope we figure yeah. it out. <laughs> hoping for this, real quick. Let's say hi to some people in the chat. We got some people in the chat comments. What's going on, Mister Eighty One? I appreciate you. Thank you so much for handing What's in going here. On? I don't like Russell Westbrook's attitude. What I seen today, I don't believe uh, he's going to buy in. His body language looks different from all the reports. Here, here's the thing though about that is like because what, what, what he's talking about is media day. Um, yeah. I don't care. I don't care how LeBron or how uh, Westbrook responds to the media. He's never had a good relationship yeah. with the media. I like would you like him to be like, "Hey, yeah, but you got to understand. One, 
He knows the entire world knows that the Lakers don't want him. The Lakers spent the entire offseason trying to trade him. And all the questions today were like, how do you feel about the Lakers not wanting you? And all of his all of his answers were like, I don't care. I have a job to do. I'm going to show up to work. Yeah. You know, like he says, like, you know, everyone has a job. And some sometimes people at your job just don't like you. Like, that's just what it is. <laughs> it's true. Like, I don't yeah. care how he how he feels about the media or what he says or anything like that. Even all the good stuff he says, I care less about that. What does he do on the basketball court? What is he, yeah. is he willing to make the change? Is he willing to make the adjustments? Stuff like that. What do you think? I, see, and, and that's, and that's where it gets me because it's like, you know, like it, you make a good analogy. Okay. If you're walking into work every day and you know, the people there do not like you, it's going to be hard to come in with like a peachy attitude. You know what I mean? You're just going to come in, do your job, then leave. But now the workflow does go so much better when you're, you know, vibing with everybody, you know, high fiving, hey, good job, you know. But so I don't know if there's a little friction going on with LeBron right now, like him and LeBron, because I know when um <clears throat> I know when they had it was a game. I cannot recall which game, but it was a game during this last right after the finals, and they had a, like a community event and LeBron in Pretty much like LeBron and Russ were there, and like they didn't even acknowledge each other. They didn't like go and oh, like, about each summer other league. Up. That was that was this that was yes. this uh, summer league. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um. So you had Russ there on the sidelines, you know, trying to help the coach and everything like that. But like him and LeBron, to my knowledge, they'd even like dap each other up, and like these are teammates. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like that kind of stuff shows, and it's like, are they going to be able to work together effectively on the court if you can't even, you know, like if you're not really, you know what I mean? You don't really see that often. You know, you like yeah. look at like Wade and like you know, LeBron, the best friends, you know, always hanging out. So it goes a long way. And plus they won championships for it. You know what I mean? So I chemistry don't know. No, no, it really is. Chemistry is a huge factor. I don't know if it's, I'm not gonna say it's not possible, but in on a championship level caliber, it's very, very hard to win without chemistry. Very, very hard. Yeah. Agree. Uh, he's going to ruin team chemistry. I have no trust in him. Yeah. I mean, basically we just touched on that. Well, welcome Jake. Welcome, hey. welcome. Yes. Hi, Jake. Uh, Hi, Emma. Hey, uh, Lakers will be worse than all the weekends. AD always injured. Westbrook useless, only a stat whore. And LeBron passes prime warriors for life. Haters. Haters in the building. That, right? now, that, what's going was, on that, right? was that movie really that bad, though? Was it? Uh, yeah, well, Halloween ends hasn't came out yet, uh, but it doesn't look oh, too I promising. Thought, okay, that's not the last one. You okay. talked about those Halloween kills was terrible. Or I thought it was terrible. I thought that movie was trash but uh yeah that's just me uh lakers even worse than halloween kills and there you go that's a good reference halloween kills and jeepers creepers reborn there you go okay. it was awful uh lakers bench also terrible i don't think so i actually think lakers have a really good team like i think the lakers it's just can they figure it out um would you say we, are we deeper than we are last year oh yeah much better what so i have like a whole video breakdown on uh Rondo. the stands lakers channel about yeah. um about comparing this team to the to the bubble team. And mm -hmm. this team is very, very – this team is technically better on paper than the bubble team yeah. by far. But that team just had such great chemistry. That team had so many things that about it that made it yeah. so great that, yeah. you know, it wasn't it wasn't just, like, just stats and stuff. What's going on, City Lights? I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. What's up, City uh, Lights? Wes, Westbrook, as always – been a selfish dad or all about stats, not team winning. I mean, he says that he's willing to change. He says that he's willing to uh, to fix it. So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because what are the other options? What are the other options right now? I'd rather give up six first-round picks for as stands like Kristen Brickhead. Brickhead, I'm roasting him. Well, thank you, Mr. Eddie Wood. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, it is. Uh, it is. It's one of those things. Like, it's going to be interesting to see if we could figure it out, if we could make it work. Um, you know, I have – I have optimism. I have hope. You know, maybe it's a blind faith, but sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you gotta. And and, and when it comes to your team, but uh, well, we have to honestly because people that 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 bubble championship people people discredited us on that one. That we have to get one outside the bubble. Yeah, yeah people still people still try to come up with reasons why it didn't count or whatever. It's it's silly to me. But um, hey, look, a championship is a championship. Exactly. And I always say like. What it tell me an advantage that the Lakers had that no other team did? They the, the NBA literally extended it another week 
So teams like the Clippers and stuff could be fully healthy. So they actually exactly. gave other 